Welcome back to Spatial Ecology Scoop, week seven. Week seven. Really getting into it. So we're talking about, well, scale. Scale is key. That's the, the topic. Mm -hmm. Why why does scale matter? Why why does it matter so much? Well, when you look at that, right, you can't can't tell much. I mean, you can see some colors and some patterns, right? Okay. Now, what about that? You can you can tell a little bit, maybe, you know, okay. See different colorations. It's perhaps an interesting landscape, or maybe it's an animal, you know, it's maybe those are feathers, you don't know fully, but then you have to look at the whole picture, and you see, whoa, they're ducks, yep. and you couldn't tell from the one picture right here that there was two ducks, you could just see that there was maybe one duck. So there's multiple different like ways a scale affects our analysis. The example that we have is looking at at least flycatchers have a negative correlation on the abundance of American red starts at a fine biological scale when it comes to competition. But actually, when you zoom out and look at it from a more just range perspective, there's actually a positive correlation between least flycatchers and American red starts. System closeness and openness, this depends on if you're looking at a fine scale and maybe the system isn't as open to other processes like I mentioned here, emigration. Um, there can be like a local extinction mm -hmm. that causes at a fine scale, a local extinction. Like there's none, none of those individuals there. But if you zoom out, if you look at it from a coarser scale, the extent to which we're looking at a process, um, then you can see that, well, individuals are emigrating from other populations and this is just a sink population. Mm -hmm. You may think that at the finer scale, oh, they went extinct, but actually, zoom out, they're emigrating into this, this, this sink population. It's extent in green, um, Spatial grain, or spatial extent is looking at like what is sort of the, the frame in which you're looking at a process. And then the grain is to what is, what is the size of each individual unit. So think of like 8-bit versus 16-bit versus 64-bit, sort of, sort of like that. It gets, the resolution gets finer and finer as you move up mm -hmm. in the spatial grain. And then the extent, uh, the example I give is like you have a sieve right the extent how big the sieve is like your extent and then the size of each little individual uh, size of the mesh is your grain mm -hmm. and you're looking at it that way and predictability and space time scaling uh, you need to take into account space and time when it comes to scale because the effects of heter heterogeneity averaged over a broad scale become become mute so if you're looking at a broad scale and you're looking at a heterogeneous landscape if you average everything, finer, more like fine biological and ecological processes will be overlooked and they'll become mute. You can't really see them. So that's why, I mean, there's, there's, you need to look at everything from different scales um, so that you can look at broader processes, but then also finer processes. Uh, and then you can, so what's called a pseudo prediction in which predictions are made at a broad scale and are not temporally extended. So when you look at something at a broad scale and you say, okay, it's like this now, it'll probably be like this in the future, but then you don't actually take into account like past or present data, uh, or, or past, present, and future data, then you're, you're doing what's called a pseudo prediction. Mm -hmm. this, this section's titled Dealing with Scale, because it's kind of like we know that scale affects us, how can we talk about that and deal with that now? Um, so we really, like the goal of this all is to find the interface between biology and ecological processes and how they play into each other. How do we study their linkages? Um, it seems like something that's only come up more recently that we're beginning to see how limited our scale can make our view. Um, and advances in technology allow us to like see with better resolution, mm -hmm. especially in like satellite imagery for instance, and that applies uh, to this concept of scale. Like we're just understanding more and more minuscule things that play into the bigger picture. Um, yeah, so uh, there are multiple scales that we need to consider, space, time, and um, organizational complexity. And the key here is that we need to identify scales of interest. There is no correct or incorrect scale to look at things, it's just it depends on the phenomena that you're studying. Organismal differences, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the paper, the other paper brings up ecological neighborhoods or areas scaled to a certain ecological process. Mm -hmm. Domains of scale, sort of relating back to the other slide about 
you need to make sure that ecological scales and organismal scales work together if you're looking at both. Yeah, um, definitely. So if you're studying the organism, you're studying the ecosystem that it's yeah, in too, yeah. and vice versa to an extent. Like if you're studying an ecosystem, you need to understand the organismal processes that play into that. Yeah. Yep. So we'll catch you guys in the next video. More to come for about scale. Yeah. yeah. All right. Awesome. Like, like, subscribe, follow, smash, smash, do it all.